Hey guys, my name's Justin, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this sliced up glitch art photo effect in Photoshop. Now you guys really seem to enjoy my last couple of glitch art tutorials. I did a VCR one and a split color effect, so I'll link those below. But in this tutorial, we're gonna be using a slightly different method of using clipping masks and filters and transformations to create this sliced up effect. So this is what the final result looks like, and we'll go ahead and recreate it for you step by step so you could learn how to do it on a photo of your own. So I've got my photo here. I think this is a nice example of a photo that will work well. And we're going to start by creating a new layer. So we'll go to Layer, New Layer. And then we want to grab our Rectangular Marquee Tool to begin working. Now, you want to make sure you're working on Add to Selection Mode. And then you want to set the style to Fixed Size. This is going to mean we can just click and it'll create a fixed size rectangle of whatever size we set. So I want this rectangle, or stripe in this case, to stretch all the way across the canvas. So just to ensure that's gonna happen no matter what photo you have, just use the maximum width of pixels that Photoshop allows you to use. So I'll use 300,000, and that's the maximum. Now for the height, it's gonna be slightly different based on how large of a photo you're working on, but just judge in relativity to how big I'm making them compared to my photo on what amount of pixels you need to use. Five pixels is a good starting point for our first thin stripe, and we're gonna create a thin one, a medium sized one, and then a larger chunky one. So about five to 10 pixels, just see what looks thin on your photo depending on how large it is in height and width of pixels. So I'll use five, and you can see when I click here, it's automatically gonna stretch this little rectangle stripe all the way across the image, and you can also take a look at, in relativity, how big I'm making this thin stripe. So five pixels works for this size image. And instead of just clicking all over the place, I'm kinda gonna be mindful of some interesting placements. So right on the eyebrow, right on the eye, the bottom of the eye, maybe some parts of the nose, and then maybe the top of the lip and the bottom of the lip. And then just the, the rest of the face. So you can see I'm, I'm kind of trying to keep in mind some interesting placements so that when we go ahead and displace them, it might create some cool looking final results. So we still want to leave some open spaces because we're going to create some more lines. But for this first layer, once we have some lines set out, we're going to right click and fill with, you could just select black as the contents and press OK. Now you can right click and deselect and you'll see our first layer of stripes. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process. So I'll create a new layer with layer, new layer. I'll grab my rectangular marquee tool, except this time I'll set the height to something a little bit more. So I'll do 15 pixels this time. Now I'll go ahead and create some more stripes next to some of these lines and maybe I'll fill in every other gap or leave some more open spaces but essentially I'm gonna fill in some more parts of this image. So that looks about right because we're still gonna do one more final stripe. So right click, fill, and we'll select black again, press okay, and then right click and deselect. So now we're gonna do our final layer which is gonna be the chunkiest stripe of them all. So this time I'll just press shift, command N, that's a create new layer shortcut if you're on a Mac, and then I'll change the height to, let's do 30 pixels this time for the largest stripe. Now let's see where we could fit this in without overlapping. I can fit one in there. I'll do one there. I left a space there on purpose. Uh, let's do one there. Right there. And right there. So now we've got our thickest stripe. We'll right click. Fill that with black again, and then you can right click or deselect. I'll use the shortcut Command D on a Mac. So now we've got all these stripes over some important parts of the image, and we're gonna begin to use clipping masks to slice up this image. So take your original background layer, and we're gonna duplicate it three times. So you can right click and duplicate it, or if you're on a Mac, you can always hit Command J as the duplicate shortcut. So now I have three copies, and what I'm gonna do is place a copy above each one of the stripe layers. So I'll drag this one here, I'll drag this one here, and I'll drag this one here. So now we kind of sandwiched in the stripes and the photo layer. Now we're gonna create a clipping mask 
to set the contents of this layer to fall within the stripes. So we can go to layer, create clipping masks, and you'll see that this little arrow will pop up. And that means that this part of this image is only going to show up within those stripes. So we'll do that for all three of them. I'll use the shortcut option command G for the rest of them, but you can go to layer, create clipping mask. And once you have the arrows on each of these stripes, we can now begin transforming these photos and creating that displaced look. So let's start with the first one here, which is the small stripes. We'll go to edit, free transform. And now if I hold shift and option to constrain proportions and drag from the center, I can slightly stretch it out just enough so if you look at some of the lines of the photo, like the contours in her face or her hat, you see that we're creating some displacement. So I'll press enter when I barely stretched it out a tiny bit, and then grab your second one. So now we'll do the medium stripes. So I'll press command T, or you can go to edit free transform. And this time, instead of stretching outward, I'm going to stretch in a little bit to create a bit of a staggered look. So I'll hold shift and option, and I'll stretch this photo slightly in. So now we have some parts of the face going out and some parts going in. And I'll press enter. Don't worry about the little black bars that appear at this point. I'll show you how to get rid of those. It's just because this photo is not clipping the entire portion now that we made it smaller. But I'll show you how to get rid of those. Next, we're going to grab our last layer. Same thing, Command T. And I'll hold Shift and Option. And I'll stretch this one out. And I'll go a little bit stronger with this effect because these were the big stripes. So I'll press enter once I'm happy with that. And now you can see we have this kind of digitally stretched and displaced image. But let's take care of those black lines that showed up. So grab your layer two, which was the one that we stretched inward. So there's some black left. And then go to layer, layer mask, reveal all. Now this is going to create a layer mask so we can paint and mask away certain parts of this. So grab your brush tool using a soft round brush, so 0% hardness at a decently large size to cover up the, those portions. Set black as your foreground color and then just paint in that layer mask until those little black lines disappear. Alright, so at this point we have a really nice looking stretched and displaced image and I'll show you how to add some final glitchy touches to the color and noise. Head over to the top of your canvas, so the very first layer, and then go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. So what this will do is place a new hue saturation layer above all your layers. And what I like to do is just slightly mess up the hue and the saturation a little bit, just to make the colors look a bit glitched and a bit off. So I'll take the hue and I'll do like plus or minus five. So in this case, I'll do plus five. And then I'll take the saturation and I'll do like plus 15 or 20. This will kind of skew the colors and boost them up a little bit. You can also adjust the lightness, maybe increase it one or two, but that's about fine. That's a really small touch that messes up the colors a little bit. Then we're going to grab our original background layer, and here's where we're going to get that split glitchy color. So with your original layer highlighted, open the channels menu, and if you don't see that, you can go to window, channels, and then select one of these color channels. So I like to select red to get that red blue separation and then go to filter, distort, shear. Now you want to be really slight with this. So just take that middle line or create a dot in the middle and then pull it to either direction, left or right, just the hair, barely any amount. And then for the undefined areas, I like to use repeat edge pixels. So when I press OK here, we see that we've split just the red color channel. And when I turn back on all the color channels by making the red, green, blue visible, you see I get that red and blue color glitch and color separation of the channels. Another very final touch you can do just to add a little bit of noise and grain is grab one of these layers that you have clipped onto the stripes. So I'll grab this first layer for the thin stripes and then go to filter, noise, add noise. Here you can just add a tiny amount of noise to maybe one or two of those chunked striped sections. So I'll just do like 3% here and you can see it kind of grains up some of those lines. 
So that's essentially how to create that sliced up distorted look. Hopefully you can use that clipping mask and stripe technique to create your own effect. And feel free to put as many color adjustments and noise grains and glitchy effects on it that you want to add. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for future videos. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or reach out to me on Instagram and Twitter at Justin Odisho is my username on all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.